The number of Kubernetes tools is overwhelming. If you go to the CNCF landscape page, they cannot even fit all the tools in a single web page view. Not only you have to scroll from top to bottom, you also have to scroll from left to right. This is crazy. So what tools are important that you should learn? Where does those tools fit in in the Kubernetes ecosystem? In this video, we are going to learn all about it. Let's get started. To learn about Kubernetes tools ecosystem, always work backwards from the logical workflow of the cluster. Let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster running. Inside this cluster, you have worker nodes running in virtual machine such as EC2. What's running inside this EC2? Your Kubernetes pods. Here comes the first set of products. What gets deployed into these pods? Your container image. So you need a place to store your container images. Some popular image registries are Docker Hub, Amazon ECR, and JFrog. How does this container images gets created? Well, you have to check in your code and manifest file somewhere. That could be some Git based products such as GitHub, GitLab, etc. Rarely, a company will just check in bunch of isolated manifest YAMLs. You will use some sort of package manager to create compact YAML files where you can pass variables for different environments. The most popular one is Helm. Then you need some sort of DevOps tool to create the container images from this checked in code. For that, you will use Jenkins GitHub Actions. Those are the popular ones. There are plenty others available. You can use Jenkins to deploy the container image into your EC2, but let's be advanced and utilize GitOps tool. With GitOps, Git becomes the single source of truth and using tools like Argo and Flux, your container images will get deployed by reading from the Helm files. If you want to know more about GitOps, check out my detailed video with demo. So here are the DevOps tools. Moving forward, how does traffic goes to these pods? It will come through some ingress. What are some of the popular ingress tools? Traffic, Ingress Ingress Controller, or ALB Ingress. Let's say traffic increases, so your EC2s need to scale. What is the most popular open source tool there? Carpenter, which auto scales your EC2 node. So another EC2 nodes comes up. Now the most popular and most asked set of tools in interviews are observability tools. Whenever you think of observability, divide them into three areas, logs, metrics, and traces. So how does logs get shipped out? You need to have some sort of agent running inside the cluster and ship logs out to some logging system. One example could be Fluent Bit is the agent shipping to Splunk. How about metrics and traces? Another popular upcoming tool is Open Telemetry. Open Telemetry can ship your metrics and even logs and traces to various end software products. For metrics, the most popular product is Prometheus. Remember that Prometheus does not display graphs. Prometheus is just a time series database where all the metrics data is sent. To produce the nice graphs and dashboards, you need to use some sort of tool such as Grafana. How about traces? Open telemetry can send trace data to outside your cluster as well. Some popular trace tools are Jaeger and AWS X-Ray. But there are some other popular products such as ElkStack, which can store your logs and metrics. And if you're using AWS, there's Amazon CloudWatch, which can store your logs and metrics as well. Traces show the path of the traffic flowing through as well as how much time is spent on what lines of code, etc. Related to this, what if you want to control the traffic from one pod to another pod? You want to implement Canary traffic splitting, as well as MTLS security protocol, you need to use service mesh. The most popular service mesh is Istio. You also have Linkerd and then up and coming Cilium. Now Cilium comes with all sort of tools. For service mesh related feature, you will use eBPF, but note that not all service mesh features are supported with eBPF yet. Now let's move on to one of the more critical areas, security. Again, work backwards, you have to scan the container images, both when they are sitting in the image registry as well as when they are running inside a pod. 
And there are various tools available such as Prisma Cloud or Aquasec which can do this both static scanning of container images as well as dynamic scanning when they are running inside a pod. Alternatively, you can do the dynamic scanning using newly released Amazon Guard Duty or Falco and static scanning using ECR static scan. Now, what if the scan goes fine, but someone is trying to implement a pod which does not adhere to some security controls? In that case, you can use policy agents such as Open Policy Agent or Kyberno. All right, so now let's say your pods are running fine, but you want to control which pod can communicate with what pod. In that case, you need to use some network policy engine. The most popular one right now is Calico. Moving on, Rarely an application will just run inside a pod. Most of the times you will save something in a database. In that case, you need to save some credentials. Here comes the secrets. The most popular secrets tools are HashiCorp Vault or AWS Secrets Manager if you are using AWS. Your cluster is now up and running and functional. But in real world, there are some other components that come into play. Cost optimization. For cost optimization, Cube cost is very popular. The next area is cluster management. In enterprises, hundreds of Kubernetes clusters will be running at the same time. And you will need a single pane of glass to visualize them and manage them. You want to easily install some add-ons in certain set of clusters. You should be able to see what went wrong in what cluster, etc. For that, you can use Rancher, T2IQ Convoy, or Rafe. Ideally, Kubernetes workloads should be stateless, but in some cases, you need to have stateful workloads. And for stateful workloads for storage, for backup, DR, etc., the most popular tool is Velero. And finally, you will need some sort of managed cloud Kubernetes service, which takes away a lot of management overhead, such as managing the control plane, making etcd highly available, as well as give you features like providing you with a secure AMI, making one-click upgrade accessible, etc. The most popular cloud Kubernetes service out there is Amazon EKS or Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service. In summary, to learn about tools ecosystem, always work backwards, think about the different subcomponents and then map the tools. This approach will work not just for Kubernetes, but for any systems or applications or technology. Did I miss any particular tool which you think is critical and should have been included? Let me know in the comments. If this video was helpful, please click that like button, smash it if that's something you are into, and subscribe. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next lecture. Bye.